webinar. Um, this webinar is being recorded and will be posted on Discovery. And if you have any questions, you can type them into the question box. And at the end of this presentation, um, we will uh, take your questions in turn. So my name is Thea Sarr, and I'm the Director of Communications and Programs for Discover E. Um, joining me today is John um, Ehrenberg uh, from Northrop Grumman. He's an engineering management group um, engineer and uh, is a volunteer extraordinaire. Um, and also joining me is Leslie um, Berhan. She is on the faculty of, of the University of Toledo and is also an amazing uh, volunteer, and we're very excited um, that Leslie could join us today. Uh, thank you, Leslie. Um, and uh, we're waiting. John is supposed to be joining us, and he may have gotten detained. I'm, I'm um, here, if you can oh, hear me. Welcome. welcome, John. We can hear you. Oh, awesome. Okay. Um, I, I, and I, was muted, I was muted before, so. I, I was detained, <laughs> but... Uh, I, I overcame that obstacle. All right. You engineered your way through it. Um, okay. So um, just before we get into the how-tos, I thought the most important how-to was the win. Uh, so Engineers Week is scheduled uh, this year for February 18th through the 24th. Uh, the Future City Finals also happen that first week of Engineers Week. Girl Day is always introduce a girl to Engineering Day is the Thursday of Engineers Week on February 22nd. Our Global Marathon, our online series of conversations for women in engineering and technology, um, is uh, scheduled March 7th through April 4th. And Global Day of the Engineer, our international celebration of engineers and all they do to make the world a better place, is scheduled for April 4th. So. My question for you all today is how will you inspire wonder um, this year during Engineers Week and beyond? Um, so today during this how-to, we're going to review how you can inspire wonder, um, you know, what's involved in setting up a classroom visitor, visiting an after school, um, what's involved in making a career presentation, uh, hosting an engineering um, event or hosting a girls' night out, um, which is part of our Dream Big uh, project and other ways that you can um, celebrate Engineers Week. Um, so we have a, a full agenda, so I'm gonna dive right in. First off, setting up classroom visits. Um, what's involved? It's, it's pretty much exactly like it sounds. <laughs> Classrooms are after school, it's usually about 45 minutes to 60 minutes, and it follows a very simple tried and true um, approach, introducing yourself and talking a little bit about your job doing a hands-on activity with students, and then wrapping up that activity and linking it back to your, um, your engineering job. And there's two ways, uh, really, to set up a visit. One is uh, you've been asked, you've been invited, um, and uh, that one's, you know, you just to decide if you want to go or not go. And the other one's a little bit more um, involved, where you decide you want to do a, a, a school visit or an after-school visit. And so you approach the school or after-school. And what I hear all the time from uh, potential volunteers is, how do I find a school? How do I find an after school? What, um, are they going to think I'm kind of, uh, kind of uh, you know, uh, strange to be calling and making this offer? No, they're very excited. Um, and there's a number of ways you can um, uh, find a school. Um, you can find out if your company or engineering society has relationships with local schools or after schools. Um, do you have children yourself? That's a great source. <laughs> Go talk to their teacher. Um, uh, and if there is a school or after school near your home or your work, call and ask to speak to their STEM coordinator. And that part about, you know, if you link it to a recognized initiative like Engineers Week, you can say, hey, I'm, uh, you know, an engineer or a technician, and I would, celebrating Engineers Week this year, uh, would love to do a engineering um, activity and workshop with students at your school. Is that something of interest? And um, most of the time, they will say, yes, uh, please, come on down. Um, and when uh, you get yeah, there's, there's one okay. more thing I just, I just, I just thought of. Uh, for those of you uh, Northrop employees that have a uh, volunteer coordinator at your site, typically, uh, they will have a list of of schools on their on their list, so you can reach out and say, "Hey, 
is there a school that's looking for a speaker? And that's another method. Right, right. And John, this, this webinar is the one for the general folks and the four o'clock one is specifically for Northrop Grumman okay. employees. But, then, um, then I, I would generalize that and just drop the company name and say your company <laughs> may have a may have a person like that. Uh, don't hesitate to call them. Exactly, exactly. Um, and when you get to the educator, you want to really coordinate with that person uh, and talk to them in advance about um, finding out what the students are are doing right now. Um, and how much do they know about engineering? Some of, some teachers really do uh, an extraordinary job uh, introducing engineering to um, to their to their students. Um, or after school programs might have an engineering club. Um, so find out where they are in that spectrum of of knowledge. And then talk about you know have one or two or three different activities um, that you're considering, and then talk to the educator about which activity um, might complement what the students are already studying or what they're doing. Um, and then here's some kind of logistics. Make sure you know how much time you're gonna have, how the room is set up. Are they gonna be at desks? Are they on the floor? Is it, is it um, uh, at tables? Um, because that will also help you figure out what activity you wanna do. And then if there's access to the AV um, equipment, if you, if you wanna bring in a video clip or the internet, um, so you'll know what is available to you. And never assume that the teacher will have um, the materials for your activity. Uh, they may have scissors or they may have rulers, but if you have any kind of consumables in your activity, um, make sure you bring uh, what you need for the number of students you have and that you actually bring extra. <laughs> Especially if you're doing like gumdrop dome because everyone will want to eat the gumdrops. So John, you are a, uh, a veteran volunteer. What advice do you have for someone um, doing a hands-on activity or a classroom or after-school visit? Let's see. The, the, the first thing I would say is go and have fun. Uh, it can be a little intimidating, but I think the students, whether they're in primary grades or post-doctoral students that I've talked to, uh, react to a, a visitor uh, very emotionally. The, the details are not as important as communicating. You like what you do, uh, you find it fulfilling, uh, and have fun. Uh, the other thing that uh, uh, I tend to do is I don't talk down to the younger students. I just answer using different sets of words, uh, and, and they get it. Uh, it's really one of the best parts of my job getting to share things like the James Webb Space Telescope that you see uh, in the picture that was at the VEX, uh, the Robotics World Championship. So there were lots of uh, very eager students uh, uh, wanted to understand how, how the large robot uh, that I was working on worked. So I think uh, communicating how much you, how much you like your work, what you get out of it, what you do, uh, is the most important part, and and not not to fret over details. So my next question for you, John, is you know because we want this to kind of inspire the folks out there, yeah. you know, about um, if you haven't gone in and done a classroom uh, a classroom visit, you know, what's the most embarrassing story you have in working with kids, and how did you overcome it, or what 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 you know what made it kind yeah. of funny. Or, Right. So, so when you go in, you know, some, uh, if you get them excited, they will just ask questions. And they're, you know, students of again of any age are typically pretty unfiltered, so they can ask some really cool uh, questions or some really hard ones. Uh, the the one that comes to mind was one young student asked how much money I made. Uh, the the teacher intervened before I had to come up with an answer. Uh, and then another student asked, you know, what's the biggest mistake I've ever made? Uh, so I, I told them about a, a story of a, of a design review on the Chandra X-ray Observatory, uh, where I had been up for about two days fixing a problem, and I made a mistake in a rather important parameter by about a factor of a thousand. 
uh, and concluded that my own design wouldn't work. Uh, and then I was politely reminded that I had made this egregious error and come to the wrong conclusion about my own design. Uh, <laughs> and I'm happy to say that the design flew as I designed it, and it's still working 20 years after we did it. Uh, but I, I think uh, sharing the fact that you're human and you make mistakes and things uh, happen. Fortunately, uh, uh, that's my most embarrassing story. Uh, you know, I didn't have, uh, you know, my pants didn't split or anything like that. But uh, uh yeah, and I think that the, the important thing here is, you know, we were struggled with, you know, should it be the embarrassing or what was kind of like challenging, but both of those are are, are natural questions that kids are going to ask. Um, you know, uh, mine was, you know, forgetting all the materials and arriving with nothing in my hands, and you're like, ah, um, those things happen, but you just move on and and um, uh, and, uh, and and keep going. Yes, and I, I think. Uh... The student that asked me what was the biggest mistake you ever made, I think the first words out of my mouth was, you mean other than calling on you to ask a question? And then <laughs> everybody laughed, right? And he was a fairly young student, and he took it exactly the right way and then asked his question. So yeah. I think, you know, just deal with them like a uh, like a colleague, uh, you know, as, as a younger adult that you have may have to use different words with, and they will react. Uh, Amazingly, yeah. just a very, uh, uh, very good part of our jobs. So the next uh, how-to or way to celebrate um, Engineers Week um, and is a career presentation. And when um, I was talking to John and to Leslie about this uh, presentation, you know, we all just kind of said, "Yeah, career presentations, that's good." And then we started talking about all of the different formats that. Um, career presentations take place in. You could be asked to do a career presentation in a classroom, at a career fair. You know, your local high school um, might ask you to come in and, and uh, participate in a career fair. You might be at an engineering outreach event, or you might be at a recruitment event for your organization. Um, but career, so career presentations come in many formats, but they all kind of follow the same, um, the same format of, you know, talking about what you do and putting it into words that your audience can understand. So you've agreed now to do a career presentation. Um, so what happens next? So you think about what aspects of your job excites you, because the more passionate you are about your job or what part excites you, the, you convey that naturally um, to, your, uh, to your audience. Um, the other uh, next bullet about describing your job to a third grader um, I, you know, full disclosure, I'm the daughter of an engineer. I have a lot of engineers' uh, friends, um, and a lot of engineers speak in acronyms <laughs> or speak uh, or um, use a lot of technical terms um, that a lay audience or a, uh, a student audience might not know. So think about um, how would you break down your job to describe it in a very clear um, and easy manner. Um, Another important thing we've found is that um, you could say, I design satellites. As uh, an engineer, I design satellites. Um, but kids are more interested, uh, some kids are interested in just the how-to, but most of them are interested in the why. Why do you design satellites? What, what's the, what's the uh, uh, impact on society? What problem is it solving? So uh, kind of unpack it a little bit for students and, and talk about how your job or your um, industry um, what what problem are you solving? Not just how you're solving it. I'm going to create your presentation, and this is usually the the, the piece that gets most people. Um, and we have here at Discover E, we have turnkey uh, presentation slides um, that you can use in our resource section. Um, and a lot of times, your company or your engineering society um, will also have pre-approved slides that you can use. Um, so it's always nice to start. Um, with something that you can edit and add to and subtract from. Um, deciding what to wear. This, surprisingly enough, is an important um, aspect of your career presentation and also when you visit the classroom. Do you want to go in your, you know, uh, do you wear a suit and tie every day to work? Do you have a t-shirt that you want to wear? How, what, what kind of vibe um, do you want to present? Um, and what aspect of your job are you talking about? 
Um, so thinking about that is an uh, interesting part of this. And then the, the last part about the engineering career presentation or classroom visit is you don't have to go alone. You can invite a colleague to come with you. Um, a lot of people who are new to engineering outreach are like, oh, I don't want to do it at first by myself. So John, I'm going to put you on the spot. How would you describe your job to a third grader? Usually I tell people I'm building a machine to see the beginning of time. So I'm the chief engineer for Northrop Grumman building the James Webb Space Telescope, which is designed to see the very first objects in the universe. So usually I, I start at the very high level and see how they react. And uh, most people kind of react very, very positively to that. Oh, really? How does it work? Uh, and then we can we can talk about it. Or uh, I usually tell them I I build instruments for astronomers so that they can see other planets or or exploding stars or black holes, depending on what the mission is. Yeah. So it's very much about the the what does the device do, not the details of how it does it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Getting back to that impact or how it's going to answer questions or, you know, show yeah. us the beginning of time, which is just so awesome. <laughs> Every yeah. time I think about the James Webb telescope, I'm like, woohoo, I can't wait. Um, Me either. But uh, <laughs> again, it's, it's you know, what motivates me, it's, it's, it's a, a I, I will call it a, gen, a, you know, a genuine reaction uh, because, you know, I don't, I don't want to tell them that I could give them an eight-hour lecture on the optics of dust. They don't care about it. Most of the people I work with don't care about yeah. that. They they care that I can do it. They they don't want to have to suffer through it, right? So so what is it big picture that you do? Uh, I think that's that's good. And then and uh, the students that uh, uh, you know are very interested, they will glom on. So it you know depending on looking around the room, if there's lots of people wearing Star Wars T-shirts or Star Trek T-shirts or something else, you know. Well, I build spaceships or I build telescopes, uh, that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, very high level and then move it in. If it was, you know, medical equipment, I build things to save people's lives. And then and then let let them tell you their interests. And I and I would do it with a 13th grader the same way I do it with a third grader. Quite exactly. Honestly. Exactly. And the same way you do it at a cocktail party. <laughs> yeah. And the same way I explain it to my mother. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to talk about what's involved in an engineering or STEM event. You know, the... Yeah. the yeah. Sorry, this this is Gwen. Um, before we move on to the events, I had a couple of questions here come in um, regarding kind of working with students and what types of activities or demonstrations uh, might be good, especially for the younger students, first and second graders. Um, oh, that is good. And we are going to get to how to select activities um, in a little bit. So we're going to touch on that. But I think that the, the number one uh, piece when you're thinking about activities and looking at activities is really look for activities that have the engineering design process more than demonstration activities because when you're, especially with first and second graders, they want to do, they don't want to watch you. So um, look for those hands-on activities that really let them kind of um, experiment and explore a little bit. Um, like I said, we're going to get to that uh, a little bit more involved um, in, a, in, a, in a moment or two. Are there any other questions, uh, Gwen? We had one other question um, talking about Engineers Week. Last year we had a message from the International Space Station speaking to students. Are we doing anything similar this year? Um, we have asked for that message, and we always get it a couple days before Engineers Week, and that's when we know that we have that we'll get it is when it comes. Um, they are awesome, um, but they get a lot of requests. So if we have it, we will put it up on our website on discovere.org right there on Feature of the Week and um, make sure, and we'll uh, post it on 
Facebook and on our, um, uh, uh, and we'll tweet about it as well. So I would say check back on discovere.org, um, you know, starting a couple days before Engineers Week, and if we have it, it'll be there. Great, thank you. Great, thank you. Great, great questions. All right. So moving on to engineering events um, and what's involved in an engineering event. Um, uh, multiple activity stations. This is this is a family engineering night at your school. This is a, um, a dream big event at a local museum. This is a um, opportunity to invite the general public, families, young kids, um, into a museum, a school, a university, and have um, uh, engineering fair. Um, with multiple activity stations uh, staffed by volunteers, um, engineers, uh, technicians, other folks. And um, they can be huge. This picture is from the uh, Family Day, uh, engineering, uh, Discover Engineering Family Day, hosted at the Building Museum every year during Engineers Week. And they average about 8,000 folks that come, and they have 30 different exhibitors. Or you could do, um, you know, uh, engineering fair uh, at your local school. I, I did one um, every year. My daughter was in her elementary school, first through fifth grade, and we always had four activity stations hosted by parents, um, and we had about two to three hundred kids come. Um, so really, it depends on um, uh, it depends on uh, who you're partnering with and what your goals and objectives are, and. Um, here's the kind of basic outline of putting together an uh, engineering event. Um, the, first, the first piece of uh, advice, I would say, is never do it by yourself. Form a coordinating committee. Uh, get other folks to help you um, organize it. Figure out who your audience is um, for your event. Um, is it going to be, you know, for just second graders? Is it going to be in a mall? And it could be um, people who are uh, walking by. Um, and then you want to shape your event. And uh, we have a great um, training on discovere.org called uh, Large Scale Engineering Event Training Guide. And it, this will walk you through um, how you can shape your event. Uh, for example, do you want to decide what all the activities are and get all the materials together um, and then find volunteers? Or do you want to ask different uh, uh, organizations to um, host an activity station and tell you what their activity is and then let them recruit volunteers for their activity station. So you can see how you can go either direction there. You want to secure your location and your date um, and always make sure that you check with the, um, you can check around and make sure you're not conflicting with other big events happening in town or if you're doing it with a school, other, you know, other events aren't um, going to conflict. Um, select your activities, get your materials together, and publicize your event. Don't forget to invite people. Um, and I'd also say a lot of times if you are going to do this as kind of a school-based activity, you do an engineering fair at a school, serving snacks is a surefire way to get people to come. So Leslie, you've done a lot of events, and I, when we were chatting, you talked about how you recruit students. Um, and select students for your events. Could you tell us a little bit about how you go about doing that? Yeah, sure. So one of the events that we do is for uh, high school sophomore girls, and we work with uh, a school, the school district leaders, public schools, and a few other schools. And we limit the number of students to approximately 150, so that means that each school can only bring a certain number of students. Now, we aren't involved in selecting the students, but we do encourage the teachers to be mindful of the fact that we really want to reach the girls who may not have had this opportunity before. Because I think sometimes uh, when uh, schools are restricted to just bring a few, it tends to be the same kids sometimes, you know, either the ones who, you know, the ones who you automatically think about for, for opportunities. So we ask what, what the schools do um, and that they work with us. They're part of the, the planning uh, committee that you spoke about. We try to have representatives from the schools is that we ask them to ask the interested girls to write a little, you know, a few, a few sentences about why they would want to participate and use that uh, as 
uh, a factor in determining who uh, gets to come. So then we, we really get a good, a diverse group of girls who, um, and it could just be they wrote down just because I, I want to learn more about STEM and want to learn more about engineering. Um, so that's been really helpful to expand our reach and to um, really reach girls who, you know, who may not have been thinking about STEM before, but, you know, just you know, thought it might be a good, you know, might be a unique opportunity for them. Yeah, and I, that I think I, when you told me that, I thought it was really um, you know, an interesting take because a lot of times we open up our events and we, and we you know, hope people will come, um, and we forget sometimes that people self-select for you know, these kind of events. And so how do you get the audience, that, that audience that you might not normally reach and kind of remind the educators that you might be working through, not just pick the same old kids that you know, uh, you know would be interested, but try and, uh, try and recruit new kids. So I love that idea um, when you first started speaking about that. All right, so another kind of um, event format uh, is the Dream Big. Uh, girls' Night Out. So, if, for those of you who don't know, Dream Big is a large format um, engineering film uh, that showcases uh, engineering wonders from around the world and three um, and tells the story of three women engineers. It's very. Uh, it's, it's, if you haven't seen it, I highly suggest that you go out and see it. It's 45 minutes of, of um, kind of wonder and delight about engineering. Um, and one of the uh, outreach uh, um, uh, programs affiliated with the Dream Big Film is Girls' Night Out. And this is specifically targeting uh, bringing girls uh, and, and showing them the Dream Big Film and having short career presentations where you invite um, an engineer in to talk to the girls. Um, and, you know, in the good spirit of role modeling, it'd be great if that engineer was a female engineer who could introduce the film and then after the film talk a little bit about um, her work and then have some activity tables set up so the girls can go and do a hands-on activity and you might want to invite some undergrads uh, engineering students to sit at those activity tables and do the activity with the girls and give the girls a chance just to talk to um, um, younger um, engineers who might be uh, you know not quite as uh, might be closer in age. Um, and again, uh, serving those snacks. Everyone shows up for free pizza and a T-shirt. Um, <laughs> so, or at least I do. Um, so if you're interested in doing a girls' night out event, how do you, how do you put it on? Well, first, you can order your uh, Dream Big DVD um, uh, from, uh, from us. And at the end of this presentation, we'll have uh, uh, the um, the email address you can use, or Gwen, if you want to just put that into the question box, uh, you know, um, to show people, because I forgot to put the URL here, or your, your email address on here. Um, secure your date and location, um, and you might want to, uh, you might want to look around and um, see if your local museum is uh, show, showing the Dream Big film, um, because you can partner with your local museum to do a, um, a, a girls' night out uh, event. If they are, um, if they are showing the film, you might want to call them up and say, "Hey, can I bring some girls in uh, to the museum and do this event and talk to them about that?" You also want to recruit your speaker and um, uh, activity volunteers. Select your activity and collect your materials. Invite the girls and, and have some fun. So, um, Leslie, when you do an event, how do you select your activities? What what kind of criteria um, do you use for selecting your activities? Uh, well, of course, first you have to take into consideration the age, the age group and grade level of the of the students involved. That's important. Um, and also, as you, I think you mentioned before, you really want something that's that's more hands-on and involves the engineering design process rather than uh, more demonstration type activities. Um, with our uh, with uh, Women in STEM Day that we do for uh, the sophomore high school girls, I must admit that part of it is that because the girls are doing hands-on activities, not only in engineering, but in other STEM areas. Um, a little bit of, not competition, but we know that, you know, in biology, they're making necklaces with their DNA and with chemistry, they're, you know, burning the bubbles. So there is some, in, in choosing our engineering activities, we're mindful of, you know, the wow factor. We try to choose activities that um, 
could, you know, sort of not compete with those, but are as ex that might be that are ex exciting and would get um, get viewers attention. So here, that's a, a picture of um, I think airplanes and and some competition is always is always good. You know, if we have students working in teams and they have to see how far their plane could fly with a given um, penny load, you know, so there's so uh, activities that have some amount of uh, that have design, but then and are fun, and sometimes depending on the age group, you know, have some little competition involved. Those tend to work uh, well as far as our engineering activities go. Yeah, and I love how um, you like to find out what what the biology department is doing. Yes. <laughs> if your activity can, you know, just juice theirs a little bit more. Like, like hey, we're gonna we're gonna show up the biologist. Right. <laughs> um, Oh, yeah, and, that's cool. the, I, and I just wanted to add, as far as dream big, um, I would really encourage uh, you know people to really pick up on that opportunity because we showed, uh, I showed dream big as part of our engineers week. Uh, I rented out a local movie theater because it wasn't showing anywhere in Northwest Ohio, and I have a colleague, another female faculty member who has two daughters who are who were at the time I think uh, four and five, and she says they still talk about the film. Uh, Wow! Know, a year later, so you know it really made it. It 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 it. You know, I you can't underestimate the the impact that it has. So. Yeah. Oh, that's 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 really that. Thank you for sharing that story. Oh. All right. So there's more ways and how tos um, for uh, celebrating Engineers Week. Um, you can. Uh, volunteer at your local, um, for your company or your university to lead a tour. Uh, they're always looking for people to lead tours. Um, and if that's a way that you want to uh, share what you do um, with uh, students, uh, that's a terrific idea. Um, securing a proclamation from your mayor or your governor. Um, you can reach out to your local um, uh, you know, uh, uh, representative and say, hey, do you know that uh, uh, February 18th to 24th is Engineers Week? Um, and would you, uh, uh, would you um, uh, create a proclamation for it? And oftentimes they will. Um, you might be asked to serve on a STEM panel. Um, also, you can contact your local museum uh, to volunteer. Uh, they are always looking for volunteers at science and technology uh, museums. And especially if they're showing Dream Big, they might be doing some engineering activities uh, during Engineers Week. Um, we know that Engineers Week luncheons and dinners have been going on since 1952. So if you live in a community um, that hosts uh, Engineers Week luncheons or dinner, uh, you might want to check out what's going on uh, this year with those. And then anything that you do, we'd love for you to post your activities to social media at the hashtag eWeek2018, uh, uh, whether you post that on uh, Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, that hashtag will work across all those platforms. Um, but just share with the world what you're doing and how you're inspiring wonder, um, either through your work directly or with the activities you're doing with kids. So now to wrap up, I'm just going to spend a few minutes uh, showcasing some of the activities, um, uh, some of the resources that we have at uh, Discover E for you. Um, we have over 125 different activities. These are two new activities this year, coding without computers. We uh, got a lot of requests um, from folks about uh, how do you do a really, um, how do you showcase uh, computer science without a computer? Um, so this one really gets into you know, the ins and outs of coding. Um, and then uh, the tape uh, dispenser challenge where students are given a selection of materials and have to design a, a tape dispenser. And that came from our friends at 3M. Um, but there are, like I said, over 125 different activities and lesson plans. And you can sort them by grade, by topic, by engineering discipline, time, and even language. Uh, so whatever you're looking for, uh, we will probably have it. Um, that uh, career presentation that I spoke about, um, it's called Inspire Innovation, Discover Engineering Careers. And if you go to our training section of our website, you can download it um, right from there, um, from discovery.org. It's about 45 minutes long. It has videos in it. You can use it as is, or you can customize it. Um, take one or two slides. Take 10 slides. Um, we uh, just want, you know, staring at that blank page is always a little bit difficult. 
So if you're kind of saying to yourself, wow, I know a lot now about how to set up a classroom visit, and I'm going to go download that setting up a classroom visit uh, PDF from your website, but how do I actually lead hands-on activities with kids? Well, we have two trainings um, that you can utilize on discovery.org, uh, leading kids through, um, through a successful engineering experience. And then how do you talk about uh, engineering careers to kids? Um, so effectively talking to kids about engineering are, are two more resources. And then it's not too late to order your volunteer kit. We have volunteer kits for Engineers Week and for Girl Day. That's the Engineers Week uh, poster this year. Um, so there's a poster, there's bookmarks, there's uh, new activities um, in, those, uh, in those kits. It's only a $2 um, handling fee uh, to, get the, to get the kits, and there's still plenty of time to get it before Engineers Week. Um, here is our presence on social media. But I think I'm going to ask Gwen if there's any other questions for, um, for Leslie and for John. Well, we have a couple of questions in general. Um, the first of which is, how can one find Engineers Week activities in their area? Oh, OK. That's a great question. Um, so if you go to our website, um, right on the home page of Discover e.org is a, a tab that says upcoming events as a calendar section and you can go there and you can um, see what events are in your area and if you don't find any there I'd say the other great way to find an event in your area is to Google um, and Gwen and I did a little uh, practice session last week and we just wrote you know engineering events in I, I wrote Massachusetts because that's where I live and she wrote Washington DC and a whole slew of them just popped up um, so you can come to our website uh, and Googling. Those are two really great ways. And if you know an organization that's done an engineering event in the past, call them up. Call up your local museum. Find out what they're doing. Um, a lot of times universities or engineering um, companies in your area um, might be doing events as well. Any, anything to add, Leslie or John? No. Uh, but I, I was actually curious as to how we can get on your website as far as like we are hosting something. How do we, you know, how, how does it work the other way? How do we get oh. it listed on your, because yeah, if someone so would search Toledo, they may not know, you know, so that's. that's yeah, so that, that, thank you for that follow up. So yes, you go to that same tab, upcoming events, and if you have an event, it says um, submit an event. And you fill out a quick, a quick little form, and it's pretty easy. It just asks for the date, the time, the location, and the name of the event, and what type of event. Is it a Girl Day event, an Engineers Week event? And then once a week, we update um, our calendar listing, and it will show up right there. Okay. Yeah, because I think that there may be, um, like us, there may be universities in your area that may be planning something. Uh, so you, it may be worth reaching out to them. Uh, and they'd be happy, I'm sure they'd be happy to have you know, volunteers. Great. And Gwen, any other questions? Um, yes, a few more. And thank you for asking that, Leslie. That was actually the next question that was on the list. Um, so great timing. Um, these next, um, we had a couple questions about Dream Big um, and getting the film, which, see if you don't mind, I'll just address those directly. Um, if you're not familiar with the project, you can visit the education website, which is hosted on the Discover E website, and it's discovere.org slash dream big. And if you are already familiar and you know you want to try to arrange a screening, uh, I just recommend emailing me directly, and I can help you work through the logistics um, and kind of see what your options might be for arranging a dream big screening of your own. And you can email me at gwen at discovere.org. That's G-W-E-N at discovere.org. And I can help you out from there. And then, all right, I think our, our final question at the moment is, can someone obtain CEU credit um, in volunteering at an event? You know, that's a great question. Um, uh, if you volunteer with, I think, with your engineering society, sometimes you can get CEU credits, but you have to go to the organizing um, entity who's organizing the event to see if they're offering that. I don't know, um, uh, Leslie, do you offer those for your volunteers, or John, have you 
offered any kind of professional development or CEU credits? Uh, I'm not sure. I I think we might. If we do, we also do an engineer for a day activity as well with Engineers Week. Um, and I I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think there may be CEU credits with some of the things that we do. Right. Yeah, and I I, I know that. I know that in the fall when I did our, our planning webinar, my, um, my volunteer got um, professional development credits from her company um, because her company had different, um, different uh, just things that the employees were supposed to do outside of their job. So, you know, there's that too. John, any, any, were you about to chime in? Yeah, I, I don't, we don't get or give the CEU credits, but, but certainly, uh, Outreach is part of our professional development, and certainly for more the, the more senior ranks. So the direct answer would be I don't know, and I've actually never heard of it. I teach uh, classes. Usually the CEU is for more formal classes with quizzes. I think was the requirement. Uh, I may not be 100% correct, but but that's my experience. Uh, but uh, but certainly. Uh, some of the larger engineering companies do keep score, uh, so there's an equivalent of, of that, but not be used directly. Well, Gwen, are there any other questions, or are we all done on the question front? Looks like we have one more. Um, this question is, how do we get the word out to the public when media isn't covering the programs? Um, what kind of advertising uh, would you recommend for, for folks who are organizing events? Right. I'm trying to get um, to the public. Leslie or John, any any advice for our for our question asker? I think it depends on the the event. For instance, with us, we uh, for, for example, we're doing a uh, introduce a girl to engineering day, and we sent it out to all the uh, principals in the area for targeting middle school girls. Um, right now, we have. 300 plus sign up and it's our first time so that should be interesting um and then we also and then we do send it out to to the just the newspaper just a list of things that we're doing so you know even though media media is necessarily covering um us uh we we do have a, we do send a list uh to the local newspaper yeah we we certainly do uh media through through our comms folks for public events, which are, are few and far between. Uh, we publicize them inside. Uh, but typically, if I'm going to do a public talk or one of my colleagues is going to do a public talk, uh, you know, we do a little bit of social media, uh, occasionally uh, outreaches to the local papers. Uh, I, I don't think anything, I don't think anything special. Uh, so, so I would I would echo I would echo uh, what my colleague just said. Yeah, and I think um, those are great answers. I think the other thing too is at the very beginning I said don't ever do an event by yourself. Form a committee and bring in local partners. A lot of times, if you partner with um, you know with youth serving organizations. Uh, you know, you, bring, you you say let's partner with the boys and girls clubs or the or the Girl Scout uh, council in the area. They can help get out the word to their members and to their audience. So think about in your planning phase, who's actually at the table helping you coordinate the event, um, because a lot of those partners may have ways to get the word out. Um, but again, social media is a great idea. Um, if there's other online calendars uh, in your community, you can um, often sometimes submit. Um, events and activities, and then the good old-fashioned flyer uh, is a great way to um, um, kind of promote your event and posting it uh, either in the venue where you're going to be hosting the event or um, or um, around around your community. But our time is up, and I want to thank my um, amazing volunteers, John and Leslie. Uh, uh, for all that you do to bring engineering uh, alive for kids, we appreciate it. And for all of the folks who joined us today, good luck with your engineering outreach activities. And if you have any questions um, or you want to uh, continue to uh, give questions for us, you can send them to info at Discover E or visit our website. 
and I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, have a great day, everyone. Bye. Hey, thank you. Have thank fun. Thank you. Thanks.